look at this hair. Lord have mercy. So it's early in the morning here. It's still dark outside. It's about six o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm gonna be talking a little low, but I'll get close up on the camera, give you little ASMR tease, honey, yes. Um, and hopefully I could get this chit chat in one take. I started a chit chat two weeks ago and I couldn't finish it because I got interrupted. So um, we are in the beginning of October. I am officially still on break because that's just how it is right now. Um, and yeah, I got me some coffee here. My fries had this turmeric coffee by Starbucks on sale. So good. Okay, y'all. This chit chat is going to be a little all over the place. Girl, I say that in every dang on video. Get it together, Vivian. This chit chat is going to be a little bit over the, all over the place, but I am going to be doing discussing this several things. First of all, I will be filling out my lesson plan for the week for JB. And I will be discussing some storytelling ideas I have. I had another storytelling idea that came up in my head. Um, and you could jot that down. All right, so let's start off with something a little bit different. Like, I don't know, how do you guys feel about some content creators who start off, start off their videos with a quote? I like that, several people do that. Um, a young lady based out of, I think she's, she's in Houston. She's Nigerian. Um, very young. I thought she was a lot older. She's she's young. I think she just turned 30. She might even be 30. Her YouTube is Sophiology. She's known for doing the three-in-one videos. Very clever. Three-in-one meaning she does hair, makeup, outfit, all in one video. And sometimes she starts her video with a scripture. Um, Deeper Than Hair does that too. But I like to read. <clears throat> I love books. I love the smell of books. I love to hold books. Um... I like this. I mean, I think that if I could have one job, I would love to work in, a, like when I'm older or something, I would love to work in a huge library surrounded by books. Um, so anyway, every now and then, I will be reading a poem from Poems That Will Change Your Life. I love this. I purchased this a couple of um, years ago. I can't remember where. I think I was... Uh, at like something like a Walmart or Ross. So I'm gonna be reading a quick poem um, about encouragement and it's called I Resolved. It's by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. If you know anything about poetry, Charlotte Perkins Gilman wrote The Yellow Wallpaper. She suffered, she was one of those writers, unfortunately, a lot of writers suffer from depression and I think that writing is a way of them escaping it or putting their feelings on paper. So let me read this poem real quick. I resolve to keep my health, to do my work, to live. To see to it I grow and gain and give. Never to look behind me for an hour, to wait in weakness and to walk in power, but always confronting onward to the light, always and always facing toward the right. Robbed, starved, defeated, fallen, wide astray. On what with strength I have, Back to the Way, I Resolve by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. You have to look her up. Um, she was also one of many poets who committed suicide. I believe she had cancer. Um, I learned about her uh, working on my undergrad while I was in college, y'all. I'm a romantic at heart, so I love poems. I used to write poems <laughs> real quick. <laughs> I know, I went from solemn to laughing. I'm like that. A couple of weeks ago, it's actually been a couple of months ago, um, <clears throat> I found my husband's, oh, but JB found my husband's old briefcase. He opened it up and there's all these cards and stuff. And I'm looking, he said, mama, there's a bunch of cards in here. <clears throat> so I got the cards and it has all, some of them have, have all this poetry. I don't know who and I, I'm looking at it and I'm getting a little heated, right? Cause I'm like, who, who in the hell wrote this stuff to my husband and he kept it? I didn't look at all of them. I look, I read like one, one girl. I already got an attitude. So I told my husband, I asked him, I'm like, who, who, why are you keeping all this stuff? And he looks at me like, you crazy. He's like, those are from you. I'm like, girl, I wrote some type of, ugh, again, I think I was like 19 at the time, some type of poem. I cannot wait to see you. You are the light of my, some girl, some bullshit. 
I read it to my mama. My mama was cracking up laughing. I said, mama, I don't know who that person was. She was, yeah, I was deeply, and I, it was the type of love, it was the puppy dog sickening love to where when he texts me, I would get butterflies. I remember the feeling, I would get butterflies. I was like sickly in love with, with my now husband then. Child, cause I, I didn't recognize those. <laughs> Even the handwriting was different. That's why I didn't recognize it. My handwriting was different, so I thought it was another person. And frankly, it was another person. It was me, but it was another Vivian. So anyway, you guys. So girl, let's just get right into personal life. Again, y'all know how we do this personal life. Uh, what I've been watching on YouTube and what I've been watching on TV. So personal life has been a bit rocky, up and down, up and down. And it's mostly um, just work homeschooling and just personal life. It's been very busy right now, which is why I needed to take time away. Um, I gotta figure out how to get time for myself to get some me time back in and I just haven't been able to because it's just been that busy. Homeschooling has been up and down. This past week we really didn't get a chance to do a lot because I was so busy at work and I wanted to get JB out and about, just impromptu almost. He created a little comic book, which I then printed for him. I mean, drawing and all, drawing with words. I print it for him. And he worked on that for like three days, y'all, creating a little comic book. That's still learning because he's writing, he's doing character development, and he's drawing. So that got me thinking, hmm, what can we do going forward so that this is, because he enjoyed that, right? So I came across a, um, I don't know what you're gonna call it, a mythology of homeschooling called project-based learning. <clears throat> Let me give you an example. Um, Project-based learning. You have a question and we figure out how to answer that question and then we come up with almost like a rubric or an agenda or a guideline um, and the kids basically work on it and you as the parent or the teacher is the facilitator but it's their project baby okay so one of the ideas we had that we're starting in a couple more days um creating a lego set what would your lego set include what colors would it include let's measure the legos let's purchase the legos okay now we need to do an instructional guideline oh yes um and then then a part of that is writing write two to three sentences that describes your lego so he likes that we have another one that I actually purchased through Teachers Bay Teachers stuck in the 80s. My baby's an old soul, so that was right up his alley. Um, let's find, let's discover another planet, or let's come up, you know, let's create another planet. So, and I already explained it to my husband just in case he sees us just, you know, relax, not doing anything. But we are doing something because the project that we're starting with the Lego incorporates math, incorporates like five different topics or standards as it relates to second grade. Um, and yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing. So what I plan on doing is incorporating a project and however long it takes. That's a, th that's a great thing about homeschooling. It doesn't have to be, it's however long it takes to master a, you know, um, a skill. And if he doesn't get it, we go to something else and then we come back. Like J JB was kind of struggling with addition. We backed off. We went into measurements. We didn't limp. We measured sidewalks. We went down the street and measured the mailbox. We came back. We did measurements for two weeks, okay? We're gonna continue measurements and then we'll go back to addition. So projects, you know, two, two weeks or so, we'll work on a project for two weeks and then we'll go back to formal learning for two or three weeks and then we'll work on a project. And then, you know what I mean, y'all? Before or after school care. Sorry, y'all. So I did find a place commute back and forth is like um y'all it's crazy 40 minutes back and forth because i have to go up there to drop them off and then come back they take me 40 minutes and i have to do it again 40 minutes but it's not a lot we're only going to be doing it two times a week and twice a week and he enjoys it there there is some older kids that are there um and yeah he has fun so that's going on we decided to uh we're going to redo our corporate here soon and so i gotta back back up box up all our stuff because you gotta get it complete you basically got to get the rooms clear it's just three rooms but it's also our closet and baby my closets are child when i lose these couple of pounds and i have been losing weight finally and i did get something hold on i know i'm all over the place i did purchase this 
I did purchase this J Sculpt. Um, so yeah, that's been going on. I know that, you know, I was probably suffering from some depression there. Um, my anxiety was through the roof. I'm learning to breathe. Like I literally have to breathe out the anxiety. Um, I still have a an appointment with my doctor. I am not ashamed to speak about my anxiety because it's just true. It's just what it is. Um, praying more. Um, trying to you know be obedient and listen to God, especially during this time. Um, yeah, y'all, we found out that, that President Trump has COVID. By the time I load this up, again, I won't, we won't know what happens. You know, it's in God's hands. But one thing I am seeing that I'm kind of disheartened about is people wishing ill on the president. Look, I don't like the man either. I think he's a straight up asshole. Straight up. Narcissistic. Yeah. But I would never, I just can't do it. I'm an empath. It's not in my heart. I would never wish ill will or wish death upon anybody, on another human being. I can't do it, y'all. So I did say a prayer for him and his wife because at the end of the day, the man is a man and he's a father. He's someone's father. He's someone's husband, regardless of what we think about him, okay? <clears throat> so anyway, all right, y'all, what I'm watching on YouTube, I haven't been watching a lot of YouTube. I know African Hair God has been putting out videos I haven't really caught his live feed. They've been very long too. Um, I did see that April B is back. I haven't been able to watch her videos. I have been watching Thick Chick Vlogs. She's a vlogger. She does a lot of uh, videos on, well she used to do a lot of videos on weight loss and working from home. She's country too y'all. I have been watching all of Miss Delightful videos because I su support her. She's my sis real quick. Special thanks and shout out to Antoinette, AKA Bubs, Bubs B. Y'all follow her, y'all know who she is. Um, she really has been following up with me um, even before we all went back to school and stuff. And so I really appreciate you sis. So thank you so much. You know, she reached out to me a couple of times to see how I was doing. And she did that with all those kids, you know, with a big family. She has a big family. I know she's busy. So thank you so much girl for doing that. I really do appreciate you. I really do you guys. Um, so thanks to her for that. Cause yeah, y'all it was, it's been rough. It's been a struggle. So I, <clears throat> trying to slowly get my, I think I've got my anxiety in order and, and, you know, um, and also just trying to, you know, pick my battles, you know, there's certain things I'm not going to get hung up on. So anyway, yeah, so sorry y'all. So not really watching a lot of YouTube because there's not really people I care to watch, you know, honey, I started back going back looking at Chow. <laughs> One sexy Tina started looking at some of her videos again. Um, she's she's a character, y'all. I used to watch her videos a lot, like seven or eight years ago. Then she had a video where she it totally turned me off from her channel. She since removed it because the backlash she got. Um, it was a video where she was basically reprimanding her. I know I mispronounced that wrong. She's basically disciplining her her daughter, I believe, and her daughter's a teenager. But she was straight up cursing this child out. So she basically called her an mf -er. I don't know if she called her a, a, the B word. She just was going off. She was, she was not only cursing the child, using her, she was cursing out the child, calling her an mf -er, calling her a, a, you know, a bitch. I was like, whoa. No, no ma'am, no ma'am. I unsubscribe, I've been unsubscribed since, but you know, I'll check some videos out there. And she did get quite a bit of backlash from that. And then you have people who's like, it's her child, she could discipline her child the way, every way she wants. If you wanna do that, if you wanna talk down on your child like that and use those type of words, don't put it on YouTube. Don't embarrass your child like that. That is disgusting, y'all. And you are literally speaking death on your child when you do that. I know that's extreme, but you are, you have to understand what a curse word is. You're cursing your child. You gotta be careful, y'all. You gotta be careful. People gotta be careful about that, so. Horrible, horrible. So anyway, I don't know why I got, you know, y'all know me, I get off on the tangent. Um, Yeah, I haven't really been watching a lot of YouTube. Um, If I am, I'm looking at, what was I watching? 
Look, y'all, let me look at my YouTube history. Um, I'm looking through here. Yeah, nothing. This is all JB, girl. Look at all this crap he been watching. Oh, I'm laughing. <clears throat> I'm laughing because I've been listening to a lot of old school Southern rap, like old, like uh, Young Bloods and stuff. <clears throat> Pastor Troy, child, who I have been watching, and she just cracks me up. She's a comedian, and it's improv. Libby Higgins. She's the one that does videos every now and then with White Trash Tammy. Libby cracks me up, y'all. She's that, cause she's she's funny without trying to be funny. I like that type of humor. Um, and she has this character name. Is her character named Crystal? <laughs> you have to check her out. She has this character named Crystal, and Crystal does mukbangs in her car. The car is trash, child. But one of her videos she did at a car dealership not a car dealership, at a car auto place. And the guy's like checking her stuff and, he, and she says, he's telling me I should be changing my oil every 3,000, 5,000 miles. Well, he, he should find out how, how much I change my underwear. I'm like, girl, <laughs> again, it's a joke. But what's so funny also, some people don't know it's a joke. Like, of course, the people that, are, that she interact with, they don't know that she's playing a character, actually. But most of her subscribers by now know that it's a joke. And it's she's hilarious to me. I I, I enjoy that type of humor. I appreciate that type of humor. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm looking through my history. Not a lot. Not a lot. Oh, girl, I started back looking at some of Stove Top Kiss, Kisses cooking videos to get some inspiration because I made red beans and rice the other day. Yeah, I'm not really watching a lot of YouTube, honestly, you guys. Um, I'm just not. Now, I am watching TV, baby, so let's just jump right into that. Um, so, I started with a series on HBO called Olive Kittredge. I saw, look, the first episode of a show will lead me to believe, lead me on whether or not I'm going to watch it. And it starts off with a woman going into a woods and it looked like she's going to kill herself. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and so it starts Frances McDermott and Richard Richard Jenkins and Bill Murray is in it. Bill Murray is that old school human that humor that I, I really appreciate. So he has a small part in it. Not necessarily small, but he doesn't come in until a couple of seasons. It's on HBO. It is a gem. I really do enjoy it. Um, and it basically surrounds a woman and how she deals with depression and this marriage. You know, she's been in this long marriage and she has an adult son. She's a strong-willed woman. She's a stubborn woman. Um, and it's hard for her to show love, not only towards her husband, but also towards her own child. <coughs> That's real life. But um, check it out. It's on HBO. Um, I watch P-Valley Child. I got Hula, uh, I added like a package on Hulu, Stars basically. It was a bit much, y'all. It was good, season one was good, but it was a bit much. I wasn't expecting all that nudity. I get it, it's about strippers, girl. Accents were strong, it was based out of the South, of course. Um, I liked it, but I do not think I will be tuning into season two, because honey, it was like, and y'all right, someone had said, okay, one of you did recommend me watching it and for me to watch it when JB isn't around. Like, since he's here all the time, like it was really hard for me to watch it. I had to wait till he go to bed, but my husband couldn't even watch it. He was like, he said, like, mm-mm, I can't, child. Yeah, P Valley, honey, was a mess. Um, Lovecraft Country. I am on episode six. It is good, it is dark. And right now, y'all, because a lot is going on with me personally, I don't think I can continue it because it's one of those series, you know me, I always say you have to watch what you see and what you hear. It has witchcraft in it. And so, I mean, they flat out say it, sorcery, book of names, um, book of Adam, I think even. So <clears throat> there's some witchcraft, there's some sorcery. And I, <clears throat> I really didn't like at the beginning of the series, this overall feeling of, cause it's, it's on HBO. Sorry y'all. It's on HBO. It's set in the late fifties, early sixties. And <clears throat> I do like that they portray black people in the light of uh, like Hippolyta. She's my favorite character. And I love this last episode 
um because she's a writer well her, her daughter's a writer but she's a uh, she's a physics she's in physics she's a scientist <clears throat> she's a scientist but <sighs> i get it racism was heated back then but i just didn't like with the character of william and um the character of william and christina this you know the white the white savior coming to save today you know that was we saw that in the first few episodes and i was like really you know and william who we i'm not gonna give any spoilers in case you want to watch it william who approaches ruby to you know offer her something um that that actress is absolutely stunning the actress is, that plays ruby i believe she's uh she's english she's english her name is oh <laughs> wunmi wunmi masako she is beautiful absolutely stunning and of course we have june smollett the smollett the smollett family um the one episode where i am gonna give a spoiler the one episode where ruby basically is changing from a white woman excuse me a black woman to a white woman and white that was very graphic and after that episode i was like i'm done with this that was disgusting i can't do it very graphic y'all um but this past episode i really did enjoy because it, it didn't have a lot of graphics and stuff like that but i don't think i'm gonna be able to continue it because again it's very dark if you want to watch it baby check it out let me know how it feels how you feel about it um I started to watch, what did I watch? Um, Happy Valley, I got excited. Happy Valley, good, clean show on Netflix, 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 season four. I started watching it last night with Ted Danson. I forgot the little woman's name. I forgot her name, she's a comedian. Um, I love the show. I, I love the first three seasons were good. And I didn't know they would come out for season four. Um, Ozarks is coming back. Give me Ozark. Ozarks is dark, but it's not witchy witch. Sorcery dark, like Lovecraft. But, um, can't wait for Ozarks to come back. Yes, you guys. So that's what I've been watching. And, um, how could I forget Ratchet? Baby, when I tell you I was here for the fashions, first of all. When she got that magazine and was looking at that hairstyle, I'm like... Come through Nurse Ratchet with the 50s hairstyle and the yellow hat. I was here for all the fashions. The the I could dress like that every day, y'all, if I if I wanted to, but I I don't want to. But if I could, that's right up my alley. That retro look, even the hair, the makeup, very, very whoever is in charge of the wardrobe, thumbs up, baby. Um, Ratchet on Netflix. Absolutely. It was not what I I was expecting, not to give any spoilers, but I was expecting to hate Nurse Ratched. Um, I wouldn't say she's a lovable character, but at one point you feel sorry for her. At least I did. I felt sorry for her once you figure out her backstory. Um, hell, you even feel sorry for the other person who I'm not going to give any, you know. Um, and so it was different. And, and yes, yeah, that was a little graphic too. It was a little graphic, but I still liked it. So Nurse Ratchet Stars is by Ryan, who does America Horror. I'm Ryan Murphy. And it stars, of course, um, Sarah Polson and uh, from uh, Sex and the City, Cynthia Nixon. And who else to play some closeted lesbians? <laughs> Two lesbians. <laughs> girl and sarah's uh partner is older isn't her partner like 25 30 years older than her child um but look when we got to the scene to where there's an older woman that's getting looking for help for her son right and i'm listening to her speak again her fashions are impeccable too i'm listening to her speak and i'm like and i'm looking and i'm like she looks familiar but her voice sounds really i know her voice from somewhere and I'm looking at her, I'm looking at the neck, looking at the hands. I'm like, is that Sharon Stone? Sharon Stone is in it. Baby, Sharon Stone has not aged well, in my opinion. And I find it laughable because a couple of years ago, she was saying how, giving people secrets of how she stayed, stays looking young. Sharon Stone is not that old, but I wonder if they aged her in the show because she looks, 
She's 62. In the show, she looks like someone who was in their late 60s, early 70s. I'm sorry, but she did to me. Um, she looked a lot older. Yeah, I'm looking at pictures of her. She looks, maybe they did a her for the series. So Amanda Plummer is ended. I think I remember Amanda from, um, I, have a, I have a memory. She played in, what is that Stephen King series where the devil comes to Castle Rock? It was, it came on TV. What was it called, y'all? I remember her distinctively throwing mud at sheets. Things. Amanda Plummer played in Needful Things. And she also is the um, the hotel receptionist in Ratchet, okay? It also has um, Corey Stuhl, who plays an assassin. And he was in The Strain. He played, I love The Strain. Although The Strain ended really, really whack. I felt like they rushed it. Um, but The Strain had a great storyline. So anyway, Ratchet, love it. Can't wait for Ozark. Uh, continuing to watch The Happy Valley. Unfortunately, Lovecraft Country, honey. Unless I have my Bible with me the entire time, I can't do it. I just can't, y'all. So look, I did not do any type of lesson planning. Ciao. So that is it, you guys. I know this is my first chit chat for the from, you know, being back. I don't know what things are gonna look like on my channel, but I will say this: hopefully, I would have had all hair-related stuff scheduled, baby. This will be one of two chit chats that I scheduled that I recorded previously. Chit chats after this will be up to date. If that makes sense, does that make sense? Um, all of the content that you will be seeing is stuff from weeks ago, like, yeah. And that's how I wanted to schedule it. That's how I wanted to come back so that way I don't feel rushed to try to put out content when my schedule may not be available. I may not be available. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. And I <sighs> that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for your patience and for sticking with me. Um, so I'll see y'all soon. Bye.